Hi, hello and welcome. So these days I have been working on cultivating my imagination just a little bit. I want to let go of using references and create more loose landscapes in order to see what I can do with just my mind. And I have been using gouache. I have here my old palette for, from this piece because I wanted to show you what exactly I'm doing and how I'm going about it. So I started with one piece that is not this one. I started with this one, which was... I did have something in mind, so it was a little bit more structured than the other ones. And then I had this idea of using my leftover palette for a very, very loose underpainting. One that doesn't have any shapes or structure in it. And then see what I can see within the underpainting and go from there. The idea is something like watching the clouds and see what you can see in there with shapes and figures. So that's how I go about it. And that's why I have my old palette here, because I will use it for the underpainting of today's painting. So after that I created this one. I don't know what's happening there with the water bodies, but you know, the whole idea of it was to not have structure and not worry about the rules. Then I went for this one, which is a very colorful one, and maybe not as successful, but who cares? I do like the colors. And lastly, I did this one, which even more loose, as you can see, than the previous ones. I don't know why I started with this movement. The first bird-like creature was created by accident, so I went with it and... You know, I'm following the flow, I'm just not thinking too much, not using references, and letting go of all the strict rules. Today I will be painting one more of these in my sketchbook, and I will let you see what I'm doing. So let's do this. Here we go, I taped down my paper, I decided to do another portrait-like one, and see what happens. I am using a big brush, it's just a cheap brush, actually nothing fancy, and a lot of water at the beginning because I do want some loose shapes, I don't want to control the outcome too much. I do have some control over it actually, obviously, and I'm thinking of letting my husband create one of those so that I don't have any control whatsoever on the underpainting and see what happens there, <laughs> but it's a little bit scary too. So, I have a bright yellow which I definitely want to use because that's the whole point of it. I try not to think about the strokes too much so that I have something to work from. I try to mix the colors a lot and see what happens with that. I'm sorry about the noise from the water, but you know, I'm trying to stay uh, less structured and not worry about combinations and uh, rules. Because if I start doing that, I'm missing the whole point of this idea. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, obviously. I sometimes start sh seeing shapes even right here, so I am letting go of that too. I'm just following the idea that comes to my mind. If I don't have any idea, I just cre keep creating shapes and color bodies. Here, I know that these colors together don't create mud, they do create a nice green shade, so I don't mind mixing them a little bit. The paper starts to buckle just a little bit here, so I know that I have a weird line here. Maybe I can use that as my horizon line, I guess. And I do have some magenta color here, which together with the blue, the, the turquoise, they create a very beautiful blue shade that I can use here. But what can I do with it? Maybe create some dark shades, maybe just apply my horizon line and see what will happen. If the horizon line is too high, that high actually, I don't know what I can do with the foreground. Or maybe I can let go of that completely and 
create something completely different. I will have to think about that while the whole thing dries down, honestly. But I can see now that with these colors, the, ha the darkest part of the painting will be this one. I want to leave the white of the paper showing through so that I have some very bright um, places and see what I can do with that. Okay, so my paper is drying. I put down a few more colors, uh, darker ones, because I want to keep this as my lightest layer. I think I want to go darker from there and not lighter. Obviously, I even have white here. And maybe you have noticed about the strokes I did earlier here, because I started to... By putting the horizon over here, I started to see some reflections. So I'm thinking that maybe I can do some um, trees here that are going to be reflected in a water area here and then maybe add some bushes here in the front as the foreground it's as if we're looking at a lake from far away and we have a bunch of bushes here i don't know if the perspective will work properly but uh, I can try maybe with some grass instead of bushes because it's a little bit lower here. So anyway, let's start and we'll see. I want to start with a dark um, blue, a little bit to the purple side and maybe with just some of this in here because I want to mute it down. down. I want it to be dark as the darkest part of my trees here. I just want to have the horizon line and start working with that. I don't even know if I want to go all the way. Is it straight? I can't. It's not that straight. I can. better. I'll try and skip the, the color mixing parts, I think, because uh, I don't find them that interesting. It's taking me a lot of time to do this and it's usually boring, so I'll probably make this go faster so that you don't get bored watching that. Okay, I want this higher. Maybe add like a second layer of trees as if it's a small hill here and do some like, as if it is cone trees. Are, is, is this what they're called? I don't know. Just smudging some paint. Okay, but if it's going to be like that, I will water this down and create some reflections down here because every color that I'm using at the top, I have to use it at the bottom too. I want it to be um, blurry so that it doesn't look as if it's the same thing, but I want it to have the color so that it looks like it is in the water. Okay. I want the yellow together with the red so that I can create and some of that because I want to tone it down just a little bit and have an orange that is not too orange. Okay, and let's see what I can do now. I 
I only want to go at the, at the top with that so that it looks like there's some light hitting at the back maybe and there's darkness here I want to create some layers of trees smaller, bigger some variations Same way as earlier, I'll water this down and add some of this here. Just loose and lighter in color maybe. I don't know if I want to add green. I'll go a little bit further into the red. As if they're autumn trees. I know it doesn't make much sense, but who cares? There you go, a little bit muddied red. That's better. Okay, that's what happens when you keep the palette very close to your sketchbook, but I was trying to uh, have it inside the frame so that you can see the colors I'm using. Maybe that was not very wise to do, but anyway, I am not covering the whole thing, I'm just adding some color here, some variation. Maybe more to the bottom than to the top because I like the yellow as it is at the top. Maybe some bushes down here instead of similar trees. shadowy trees there we go I don't care about the detail I just any color that goes at the top goes at the bottom as well here we go Now, I want to have some bright um, area in the horizon, as if it's maybe sand or rocks. because it draws the eye inside and maybe some details of the trees as well just to keep some interest as if the light is hitting some of them and they 
can stand out. Watering this down again and creating some reflection here. Okay. And now I want to create some illusion of water here just with a little bit of blue and a little bit of white just to water this down maybe at some turquoise actually lots of water okay and see it needs to be I think that's gonna work. And now I want to add the foreground and that is the scary part I think. I will go with something dark, dark blue first. Maybe a little bit neutralized with an orange. That's better. It's going a little bit towards the grey side like that. So, I want to see how dark I can go here. work and I can use some kind of very very mild green here just I need some more yellow I don't want it to be too green because all the other colors are working well here. So 
let's try some kind of grass. A little bit to the front, which is naturally darker because it blends with the blue at the back, just to create some depth. And then some more up here, just to have something that is at the front of the water. shapes as much as possible. I want too thick here, just I shouldn't have, but some more variation here. well maybe add some more yellow but with some white to tone that down as well okay that's not let's try that that's much better. It's more opaque, so it has a better definition and creates the illusion of detail while the other ones are supporting it from the back as more loose shadows. I know that my hand is getting in the way, I can't do much about it, I think. Maybe I can move the camera just a little bit. Maybe that will be better. Yes, maybe. Okay. Okay, let's keep doing that. I don't want all of them to have the same um, movement. No. Rotation. Direction. Yes, direction is the word I'm looking for. And add some highlights back here too. And some variation here too. And just a little bit of something water <laughs> going on. And some completely random movement to make it more interesting. And I think that could be it. Let me see. Okay, I'm not liking this very much, so I'll try to do something about it. I don't know what I need. I want, I think, I want to create a little bit more brown effect to it. Maybe go back to darker, yes, great down color. I am creating mud because I need mud right now. At least that's, I think, yes. That was too much. So now I have some variation here too. I don't completely delete the previous layer, just create something that. Yes, I think it's better because it was too bright. That looks good. And I think that I'm going to add some of that to here too, to make the whole picture come together. Some more. It's a very neutral color, so it won't catch the eye, but it will bring all the colors together because 
they were a little bit different at the two spots and it was as if they were coming from different photographs or something in different places and I didn't like that. Adding colors from one area to another like this will make it more cohesive and will make it look better. Just like that. And maybe even more so to bring this whole thing together I can add some more yellow and make it the same way it was before like this color here with a small brush and add some more detail up here no that's not there that's better just a little bit nothing fancy It will brighten the upper area a little bit and it will also bring the same colors on the whole painting so it will look even more cohesive. Just random strokes. I'm just dry brushing here. There we go. Now I think it's good. The next time I am going to use these leftover colors to create my next painting and so on and so forth. That's my idea of cultivating my imagination and letting go of structure because I think it sets my mind free. I'm free to come up with new ideas and I don't worry too much about the result. It's just a sketchbook and that's the point of the sketchbook. And yeah. I would like to know how you go about it and how you come up with new ideas and how you try to loosen up and cultivate your imagination. That's all. It was a rather big video this time. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a thumbs up before you go and let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed it and if you would like to see more videos like this where I go almost real time with my process and how I work. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you on the next one. Until then, be safe, be happy and keep going for your dreams. Bye!